I think there's one very important uh, task which this organization needs to Please speak up, speak up, we don't care. There's one very important task which this organization needs to assume, and that's to uh, study and evaluate what are the root causes in a society that make people vulnerable to a demagogue such as Adolf Hitler. Now, I am the director of an organization which is dealing with the impact of poverty on making what Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, calls the bottom billion, which is quickly becoming the bottom two billion. These are the most destitute parts of the world. And what is the correlation between extreme poverty and vulnerability to recruitment by terrorist organizations? Now, there's a very strong link between our investigation and what this organization is doing because Nazism is a form of state terrorism. What we're dealing with is the way in which terrorist leaders can um, acquire suicide bombers in areas, some of the poorest areas of the world, which may be Islamic or actually in Latin America, Catholic, or in Africa, they can be any number of religions. Christian, Jewish, Muslim. Uh, terrorist leaders will go to the most destitute families that may have tell, 10 children that they cannot feed. And they will give them, for example, maybe $1,000, maybe $10,000, and say, you can use this for the rest of your family. Give us one of your children. And in a certain sense, the family has no choice. And they will go along with this. Religion will also be used as a means of justifying this. The child is then brought to a madrasa and uh, taught that jihad and that suicide bombing is the way to heaven in paradise. There are actually studies that have shown that these young, often boys, are also raped in those madrasas, which further devalues their self-esteem. They've been assaulted and dehumanized by sexual means, and the fact that their parents were willing to sell them, although they may, may not have had any other choice, further dis destroys their self-esteem. And so suicide becomes a way out. And on a larger scale, uh, when people have no hope, have no possibility of improving their lives, the idea of suicide is not such a far-fetched one. Now, this phenomenon, as all of you know, is spreading globally. It's a scourge. And in Western Europe, where you have people who have had access to education, health care, and decent wages and decent jobs, the austerity measures which are being imposed by the capitalist nations of Western Europe are leading to violent outbursts on the streets of, of Greece, of Italy, of Spain, even of England, because people will not tolerate having their lives degraded. Now what this gets down to, and I spend a great deal of time at the United Nations, where I am able to hear voices from the developing world, or as what one might say the third world or the underdeveloped world, that have been begging for many, many years for a more egalitarian economic order. Put simply, this means a more just and equitable distribution of the tremendous resources that One exist. Minute. And unless this occurs willingly through a transformation in the economic order, globally and within nations, we may be facing an eruption, to quote the president, the former president of Croatia, of a global conflagration that can no longer be controlled. This is maybe our last chance to reverse a potential third world war. And I think we need to grab an opportunity. Thank you.
Слово предоставляется Александру Гапоненко, Латвия.